Welcome to part two of our wetlands restoration video series. In part one, you learned about the importance of restoring wetlands that have been damaged, degraded, or lost. Today, we'll go across Delaware and look at some of the sites that have gone through the restoration process. So what is wetlands restoration? Well, that's when you manipulate the physical, chemical, and biological aspects of a site that was either formerly wetlands or is degraded. So today, we're gonna to look at a few projects that involve buffer planting, ditch restructuring, and shoreline erosion protection. Today we're in Lewis looking at a recently completed living shoreline restoration project along the Lewis and Rehoboth Canal. A living shoreline is a method of bank stabilization that reinforces the shoreline to protect from coastal erosion while also improving both fish and wildlife habitat and improving water quality for the area. Unlike your traditional riprap or bulkhead like you see here, living shorelines use softer materials to allow both the land and the water habitats to be connected. So the idea for a living shoreline isn't to reflect all that wave energy, but also to absorb some of it. In April of 2014, we installed this living shoreline to address a rapidly eroding salt marsh edge that was washing away due to boat wakes. It was such a steep slope here that we needed to install two of our coconut core fiber logs stacked on top of each other to get to the elevation we needed. We waited several months for mud from the naturally turbid channel to settle out into our restoration project and gradually build that elevation up. To further reinforce the coconut core logs, we installed a row of oyster shell bags to absorb and reflect some of that wave energy, as well as provide additional habitat for fish and shellfish. In April of 2015, the elevation was high enough and we came back and we planted Spartina alternate flora. Now, in November of 2015, you can see that the plants we installed are thriving and we expect that the plants as well as the mussel community will continue to grow and help to reinforce this shoreline. As the plants continue to grow and thrive, the logs that we installed will basically disappear and you probably won't even be able to tell we did much work here, but what will be left is a healthy, functioning salt marsh that will protect the habitat behind it. Living shoreline projects may need to be adjusted or maintained in the future. However, successful projects have survived multiple hurricanes and nor'easters throughout the mid-Atlantic region where hardened shorelines have failed. We are at Heron Drain, west of Dover. In 2008, Denrec took this deep tax ditch, installed a series of meanders that slows water down as it passes through this wetland habitat. Native trees, shrubs, and plants were installed to create a diverse, rich wetland habitat. Stumps and tree logs were added for some nice complexity as well. This area is now prime habitat for migrating waterfowl and breeding habitat for frogs and salamanders. As water meanders through, plants and soils absorb excess nutrients such as fertilizers and harmful chemicals from the water, allowing cleaner water to exit. The water from the Heron Drain will flow into the Cowmarsh Creek, the Choptank River, and eventually the Chesapeake Bay. Behind me is Mirror Lake in downtown Dover, Delaware. In 2014, Denrec led a remediation project for toxics in the lake to sequester those toxics, but we also took the opportunity to have a restoration project and to, est and to establish a vegetative buffer. We planted uh, native uh, shrubs and flowers in this area that are adapted to semi-wet conditions. Once this becomes established, it provides excellent habitat for ducks and wading birds, but it also provides uh, some relief from storm events and the, and the impacts from storms and it helps absorb floodwaters. It's a relatively easy and affordable technique for restoring wetlands. I am standing at a created wetland in Haynes Farm in Felton. This property was acquired by the Division of Fish and Wildlife and in 2002 Denrec converted 1,600 linear feet of tax ditch into a slow meandering channel with wide floodplains and cells on either side to collect the runoff from ag fields. Originally, this tax ditch was created to move waters from the adjacent lands quickly downstream, and it ended up carrying pollutants such as fertilizers and pesticides with it to our adjacent streams and rivers. A series of wetland treatment cells were created next to the ag fields to capture the runoff before it enters the restored stream. These holding cells provide a first round of water cleansing by removing excess nutrients including phosphorus and nitrogen. This pond will hold water if the restored stream floods over the bank. It also provides excellent habitat for waterfowl and other animals. Last but not least, this entire stretch of restored stream was planted with native trees that include bald cypress, black gum, chestnut, and oak. 
Now, 13 years later, this beautiful area has plants and animals that are flourishing. If you're a landowner that's interested in doing wetlands restoration on your property, you may be eligible for both financial and technical assistance. Please visit our Delaware Wetlands webpage and read about our restoration success stories. Thank you for joining us in this wetlands restoration video series. We hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about wetlands restoration. It's important to recognize both the ecological and economic benefits that wetlands provide to us every day. We will continue to work to conserve, restore, and preserve wetlands well into the future. Thank you.